Here, uh, here's the bingo update from the last time we podcasted. She disappeared to New Orleans out of the blue. What I did not know until she came back, well, I kind of helped that happen. Because when we were doing the Burt Kreischer podcast, best podcast ever, 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 I came back in shit-faced. She was in here during the podcast on the computer buying patio furniture for this bus that she was refurbishing, like a broken down bus, but she was going to make it into an artist studio out mm -hmm. at Washtub Willie's outhouse flats. And she thought, oh, if I get some of that patio furniture that we have here at the uh, safe house uh, mm -hmm. here on Van Dyke, that I could move that around real easy and, and whatever. I'm buying it with my own money. Uh -huh. I'm like, you don't have your own money if you're leaving me. <laughs> <laughs> you have disability, like 900 bucks a month. Yeah. You shouldn't be buying a $1,500 set of outdoor patio furniture on your last ever credit card, which is a responsible idea. But evidently, after the Burt Kreischer incident, <laughs> Where I, I went back in really fucked up, and I, evidently I dressed her down about that. Like this, you don't have any fucking money. You want to fucking leave? Be res I don't know what I said. I have no recollection of it whatsoever. But she said I beat her up pretty hard about verbally. Fucking Jamie Kilstein. I didn't beat my wife. I beat her up verbally about fucking fiscal responsibility, <laughs> to a point where she just went. I'm just leaving. So I, I was the dick that caused her to leave to begin with. But so she didn't I, tell you in the, in the moment that she was leaving. I don't know what she told me. She, I'm, I'm relying on her recollection, mm -hmm. which you know is she, she's like the 26th person in Chinese telephone when she tells you a story that just happened to her. But she drove Bert to the airport. Yeah. And, and th everyone knows that part of the yeah. story. She came back from New Orleans. She was here for three days. Three and a half days, I was sick as shit, just trembling on a couch, watching the last two seasons. I didn't know they had a, a, a fourth season of House of Cards coming, mm -hmm. so I never watched the third because I heard it, it was kind of boring. And I thought, that well, it's the last season anyway. If it's boring, I'm not going to watch it. Fourth season just came out. I have Netflix. I watch two seasons of Netflix while I'm sweating through... One night, Gino, I sweat through five sets of clothing. Mm. I was like pouring sweat. I was so sick that I, I peeling it off like I just came out of off the fucking flume. <laughs> just <laughs> that that wet, and then I go shivering in and get another long john shirt and put it on dry and sweat through that five in one night. So day four, big. Bingo has her regularly scheduled. Here's the thing, you guys. Uh, if you if you follow, you know now she's in a mental institution. Uh, but what you don't know is she wasn't crazy going in. She wasn't like flipped out. Other times where she's gone sketchy and starts cutting through her forehead with scissors to make the pain go away. She wasn't like that. She was completely rational. Even Erickson said. One of the days I was sick, I couldn't, Erickson came from LA to hang out, mm. to check on me. People are worried about you. I know, they told me they were doing that. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was quite funny. That's why I was so sick, because <laughs> that entire week when I got back from uh, New Orleans, it was a revolving door of Gino or Alex or and everyone... Stalker Deb. I shall hey, just just worried about you. And you know I cannot be social if I'm not drinking. Mm -hmm. And Floyd, like you, you you're not gonna leave Floyd hanging. He's just back you know, on the wagon or off the wagon or whatever. Off so he wagon. comes over. Uh, well, I get a drink with Floyd. I know it's only one thirty in the afternoon, but uh, I was worried about you. Hey, let's have a drink. So I was drinking so much day and night with all the people <laughs> who were checking on you, checking on me. <laughs> and then 
then it gets to the nights you want to drink. It's fight night, UFC. Mm -hmm. Well, I planned on drinking that night, and I'm so fucked that I really, I ran myself into the ground to the point where I'm, you know, I'm with all the people that say, hey, don't die on us. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I, I really thought, oh, this is really physically an imperative that I stop. Mm-hmm. And Erickson had driven out from LA with Mitchell and they're here for three days and two we drank. And then the third, I'm like, I'm sorry. I know you're here for another day and you came out to help, but I can't get off the couch. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a quivering fucking wreck. I just, I, I, I didn't eat. I drank a half a small bottle of water that Gretchen who came over to check on me cause she's worried <laughs> about me. Uh, so on the third day, third and a half day, Bingo has her regularly scheduled meeting with her fucking psych doctor, TV screen, TV screen via Skype, pract- nurse practitioner acting as a doctor, but it was a new one. So Bingo had to catch the new person up on her thing and she described whatever her most recent episodes are and some of them have been pretty weird Mm -hmm. when we were shooting that pilot she left here at like 11 30 in the morning went over to the other house Mm -hmm. the quiet house where her all of her costumes Mm -hmm. are i'm just gonna go take a, a shower and i'm coming back came back 45 minutes later i don't know if you were here but uh saying just you could tell this mm-hmm. look of terror in her face and she's dressed in all feathers and a hat going two women they 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 were there two women at the house are they from the uh johnny depp's uh, uh production because they 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 dressed me up and they they bathed me and they helped me pick out outfits and everyone's here this was the day before it and everyone's looking at her everyone knows this didn't happen. There's no mm-hmm. two women at the other house that bathed you and dressed you in like, you know, mm. the Kentucky Derby. She looks like with big hat and feathers and, and she was terrified. And she still to this day swears there were two women there. I mean, she knows that there weren't, but it was so vivid. Like the shining, you know, mm. the, the the fucking old woman in the bathtub. There were two women bathing her. She even blamed them for making the mess. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good. <laughs> and, and then, but then she also she did. I mean, she gave a very vivid description of her state of mind on a podcast, and there were people who were legitimately when that went out going, "Is she okay? Is this, you know she's talking about killing herself and." All these thoughts. Here's the thing. Uh, For the people that don't listen to the podcast, I'm addressing you. (laughs) People hear shit from the podcast and then email or tweet me saying, hey, uh, is everything okay? I heard some shit's going on. Like, if you listen to the podcast, you know, yes, I know. it's okay. I know. We thrive on this shit. Yeah, I'm just saying I know people who listen to the podcast and, you know, we're asking. Yeah. Uh so she goes to her new doctor and she, at some point, she must have said the word suicide. Some kind of uh, buzzword for uh, you're a threat to your uh, danger to yourself or others. And they said, you have to get locked up immediately. <laughs> and this is before we can even talk about, because I've been sick for three days. I go, listen, go work on your projects. I'm not going to be up for a while. I, I spent two days where I was so sick, didn't want a cigarette. I go, if I can get three days under my belt, maybe I can coast this out and quit for a while. And uh, I go, just work on your shit. And we'll talk about all the wash tub, Willie, and the relationship stuff after that. And that morning she left. She left to go to her just regularly scheduled doctor's appointment. And I go, as soon as you get back, we'll talk about this shit. And we'll fucking straighten everything out. Everything looks good. We're, mm-hmm. we're getting along. And she calls from the doctor's office going, well, this didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get out. She, she, she wasn't as throaty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this didn't work out like I hoped. I'm going to lock up. <laughs> Voluntarily. 
they they tell you, well, you can go voluntarily <laughs> or we can make you go. But if you have that check mark in that box, won't make a difference. We're not going to let you go till we decide. So she, yeah, she got locked up in a fucking loony bin. They put her up in Phoenix, which is great. And she's excited on some level that she is locked up in a place where you actually get to see a doctor. Because I, and I don't want to give away this bit because it's on the new special that should be coming out. Hey, CAA, get fucking working if you want the golden fucking carrot at the end of the rod. That's a, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's happy to see a doctor for once because here she talks to a nurse practitioner via Skype about her mental illness, which in 10 years of being with Bingo, I, knowing absolutely nothing, know that I am the best mental health care provider she has ever had in 10 years in Cochise County. Just from being around it and I have no idea what the fuck is going on but I know they're far more retarded when it comes to the subject of mental health care the so now she's excited to see a doctor problem being that was uh she saw one today, no no didn't it, she? no no she was supposed to see one today today is Monday when we're recording this she got locked up in Bisbee on Wednesday, Ooh. had to spend the night in the ER because there is no mental health, you know, psych ward in Bisbee. You have to wait for the first available bed to come. Closest one is 30 miles away in Sierra Vista or 100 miles away in Tucson or 200 miles away in Phoenix, where she was hoping. She asked, don't put me in Sierra Vista. I'll get the same bullshit. Get me to a city where I get a real doctor because she does have real problems, but no one knows how to deal with them. Again, she she was I was in the room when her, uh, a nurse practitioner via Skype locally said next time you feel like hurting yourself, just try uh getting a new hairstyle or a manicure. <laughs> I've I put that in my act oh and people my. think I'm kidding. No, that was an actual quote. So now she's but she's waiting. She's she's been sitting in what is if you've never been locked up against your will, it's the same as jail. It's yeah. you, you can't have anything. We went to visit her the first time, and she's wearing prison scrubs that are oversized, no shoes, because her sh shoes had laces, her pajama pants. She's a pro. She's been locked up before, but she forgot about the laces. So she had pajama pants, but they have a tie. Without the tie, they fall down to her ankles. But if you have the tie, well, you could hang yourself. Hmm. She's not, she was not, she was in such a good state of mind when she went in, is my point. You don't have to worry about her. But she's trying to capitalize on this opportunity to see a real doctor, to see, hey, Talk to me. Mm -hmm. I live in the fucking sticks. They still cure mental illness with, you know, fucking leeches and <laughs> acupuncture. Yes. Western medicine. Eastern medicine. Here's some Chinese herbs. Served at Chinaland. So the first day she was in, she called finally. After 20 hours, they wouldn't even let her use a phone for 20 hours. I'm sitting there waiting for a fucking call, calling up. Well, when she has her patient ID number, then she, then uh, she'll call you with that, and then you can call her. Uh, and I waited 20 hours thinking, oh, is she fucking me off? Is Wash Tub Willie up there fucking taking care of business? I don't know. No, they just made her wait to the possible the the last possible minute of the twenty four hours. Listen, I, there's there's some good people there and there's some bad people there, and uh, we'll discuss this after we find out when she's out. If you've been good to her, Valley Hospital, oh, we'll sing your praises. And Doctor Raby, who you're supposed to meet tomorrow. Yes, if, if, if you're a, uh, if, if you're good, we will sing your praises. We'll do lots of commercials for you. You will be sponsored by the Doug Stanhope podcast or vice versa. But if you're not, have a nice well, day. Well, sit down and fucking wait for it. Anyway, uh, so Bingo calls and she, 
the first phone call she had, this is Friday morning by now. She's been locked up in Bisbee overnight Wednesday in the ER, which is like, what, seven rooms is that, Gino? Yeah, seven rooms. She's in the air airtight. They give her crayons and some My Little Pony package of kids' shit. No food. She's just sitting there in a glass room. Wednesday, uh, that's Wednesday. Thursday, she can't call. Friday morning, she finally calls, and she's you can hear her voice trembling. And, uh, I, I, I don't know why I did this. I, I, I wanted the, it's I'm, it's awful. And she goes, the, I just need a cigarette so bad. Uh, what they do when you, if you have cigarettes, they give you tobacco because they don't want a fucking mental illness riot, prison riot. <laughs> But what they do is they dole them out to you. If you have cigarettes when you check in, they'll put them behind the desk. And during the four cigarette breaks you get a day, they'll hand you two of your cigarettes. So she can't bum cigarettes from someone because they only get enough to smoke during the break. So can I get one? Uh, No, they fucking keep them behind that desk. So the first thing she says is, I just want a cigarette so bad. And I went, hang on, honey. And I tweeted Facebook and tweeted, "Hey, if you're a if you're in Phoenix and you want to be a hero, go to this address. Her, here's her patient number three zero zero one nine, and drop off Marlboro Reds. And within an hour and a half, she had so many packs of cigarettes dropped off to her that they wouldn't fit. Every patient has like a box." of their stuff behind the desk with Nurse Ratchet. They couldn't fit that many cigarettes. They stopped bringing them upstairs to where she is because she had so many packs of cigarettes. And she was, she can't thank you enough. We visited her twice. Hennigan and I went up Saturday. I went up the Friday night before that. And she, the first thing she says is, thank everyone so much because not only does she have cigarettes, but they, she said it's, it's not a cliche. You have so much, like she'll get cigarettes. We get, we get a fan behind the desk at the ward. She found a Doug Stanhope fan odd in a fucking psych ward. Hmm. You work in a psych ward and you're a Doug Stanhope fan. Yep. So she's got some cachet. And then today, uh, Monday, that was Friday. She got the cigarettes. Today, Monday, because I when I put that out, I said also, hey, just send her mail, send her postcards. I'm gonna give you guys the address, uh, but send. I said send postcards, but make sure you say, hey, I'm a huge fan in some way that makes the the people that work there realize she's think, famous. Well, we got a celebrity here. Or what? What? Who is that? I don't know. I, ne- I ain't never heard. Of- so today she said. <laughs> I just, she called, she goes, I just got mail call and, uh, they said they've never seen this much mail ever <laughs> since they've worked here. She's just got a deluge of fan mail. Are they allowed? Does she get to see the mail? She said they have to open it up if it's in an envelope. That's why I was saying send a postcard because uh, A, I want them to read the postcard where it mm, says, yeah. we're a huge fan. So that you know every asshole there. They're f- these are not medical professionals, the people that collect the mail. No. They're no. bored, gossipy, irritated people because there are crazy people there that are irritating. I mean, I, I give them shit because they're not. They're orderly. So. And, and they're irritated because, yeah. They get spit on. And- Bingo today. <laughs> you're going to love this. Bingo today, which she called once and there was an incoming nurse and uh, they ha- had uh, the incoming nurse talk to Bingo as like a case study. Oh. Like, uh, okay, this is what you're going to deal with. And Bingo, now she knows that front desk guy that's a fan. And he's like, well, talk to Bingo and she'll tell you why she's here and use that as an example. And she goes, I got to talk to someone with brains. <laughs> <laughs> For like a half an hour. And it was, she, this is bingo, said, and it was so nice to finally meet someone in the last five days that doesn't drink soap. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fucking fell to my knees laughing and she wasn't kidding. Uh, so she thanks every one of you that and keep sending shit. We're going to take a break after this. Mm. I don't know when she's getting out. They said she was going to meet with a doctor finally after five days for the first time today. But no, it got pushed till tomorrow. Oh, really? And she's it's it's a triage situation where you have the most desperate cases and she's the least desperate case, which means she's going to float around in the system longer than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, bear in mind, I was I was talking to you over the weekend on the phone and shit. And so I was aware of the, the diagnosis and how she'd been locked up and then sent up there. And when you, when I went, so when I came with you to the hospital, it was a little bit ar- like arriving at a real hospital for physical injury, having been told that your friends and I've been in a car crash and you find them on the tennis court <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> b- because there, she seemed, she, she, she just seemed like bingo. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with her whatsoever. And she was, and she, she was, walked into the yeah. visiting room with these oversized yeah. prison scrubs. Like it looked like a Halloween costume. Yeah. And she's, she's doing this walk like hunched over with her elbows <laughs> swinging this way and that way, like a old, like Charlie Chaplin y walk, like just yeah. cartooning it up. Everyone else is like crying and maudlin in the visiting room. And she comes in just bouncy, bouncy. Look at how silly I look. She loves it. And the, 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 the way th- or the, the meeting room was okay. It was a little bit like a Hewlett Packard cafeteria. <laughs> the, only yeah. th- the, the oddest thing about it was you'd look around the tables and think, which one's the patient? Who's visiting who? We, we did, we did a lot of that. Me and Brian, when we were waiting for her to come down, <laughs> we're going, uh, all right, let's play which one's the patient, which one's the visitor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because they all had normal clothes. You could tell by the shoes. Yes. That's how you could tell. No laces. Wait. Yeah, no laces in the shoes. Kenny's been there. Been there, done that. <laughs> uh, I, I called after uh, we left the second visit on Saturday. and Because uh, Brian's going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to Daytona. We're going to leave your girlfriend in a mental institution. I don't know if she's my girlfriend yet. <laughs> When when she said, well, we'll talk after my fucking regularly scheduled doctor's appointment. We're going to talk about all this stuff. I washed up Willie and all that. And then she immediately goes from doctor's appointment to Bisbee ER, lock up, waiting to be ambulance driven to the first available bed in a psych unit. Mm-hmm. So I visit her in Bisbee ER and I'm like, well, all this psych shit your episodes happen when you're under a lot of stress so i'd really like to talk to you about what the fuck is going on with washed up willie but it's not a good time to bring it up because that's when you have your episodes so now i have to wait and it makes it look like i'm stringing this goddamn soap opera podcast out longer so uh still yeah yeah, yeah, it's, it's all in flux but i called uh brian and i have to travel out of here Wednesday? Wednesday morning. I got to go to Daytona. You got to go home. Mm-hmm. Fuck, make all my career happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I call uh, I call the uh, hospital. He goes, well, if I can fly out of Phoenix, I go, I could probably change my flight to fly out of Phoenix too and just leave the car for her in case she gets sprung while we're in Daytona. And I just leave it in the parking lot because she's a customer. You'd think you could park there. So I call the hospital. I go... Hey, listen, my wife is uh, locked up there, and I don't know if she's going to get uh, sprung out of the hatch while I'm out of town next week, so can I leave her car there in case she gets sprung while I'm away? And the lady said, that's a really good question. Because <laughs> everyone there is broke. Yeah. It's just the same as jail where there's no nobody with money is in jail. They have bond. <laughs> And so she had to send me to a higher up who was just as confused. Wow, we never had a patient pull in and go, hey, I need to go to the loony bin. <laughs> Can I leave my car? Do you, do you validate <laughs> parking? Is there guest parking signs anywhere? No, there's signs that say not responsible for lost valuables. And when you go to visit, you can have nothing on you. 
So any good criminal would know from 7.30 to 8.30, everyone's valuable shit is in their car in that parking lot. Yeah, they do now. <laughs> yes, they do. Good. Good. Maybe they'll, they'll change the rules. They do give you a locker to put your shit in. Anyway. Uh, and so, the security is basically, you know, on your on the honor system. First time I Friday night I visited, there was an actual cop oh, in really? uniform. Who was like watching you? Right beside the desk where you check in. Oh. When Oh, actually, we had to check in late. So maybe there was a cop that day. We were late Saturday. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, that was, I don't know. If the, oh, 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 that, that was the point with the parking. I, I said, uh, she goes, well, if there's a financial trouble, I go, we're financially stable. <laughs> she goes, okay, well, I go, uh, if she gets out, I, you know, I, I said, I'm just checking my options. Cause she, the woman started bartering with me. Well, if you're dropping off her car, who's driving you and where are you going? I'm, I go, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just seeing what my options are. I said it very politely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say everything very politely until she's out and free with no shackles around her ankles. And then we'll get to the shit. She said, uh, I said, I, I, I might just fly her out. You're close to the airport. If she gets out and I'm in Daytona, I, I'll just, I'd prefer to just put her directly into a cab onto a plane. And I said jokingly, but not jokingly, because I know Bingo would do it. I go, it would be really funny if she just left your place in those prison scrubs you make them dress in and just jumped into a first class seat to Florida wearing those prison scrubs and you could feel her palpably recoil in the shame of oh wait you mean someone could see how awfully we treat these people like someone with has enough money that they could get onto a first class seat to Florida Right yeah, out of, yeah. Right may, out of the may, maybe you should reconnoiter your whole endeavor. We're gonna take a break, unless you had something to Not chime right. in with. All right, well, we'll be back after this very important message. Please hold. Are you having legal trouble and don't know where to turn? Trying to find an attorney you can trust? Do you think you've been cheated out of contingent compensation of back-end proceeds from third parties in the territory defined as North America and Mexico, including but not limited to all ancillary and subsidiary rights, whether audio-only, video-only, audio-video, or otherwise? Don't let a legal entity based in a midshore jurisdiction for legal or other purposes kick sand in your face. Not me. Call Eric Greenspan at the law offices of my man Greenspan, Feynman, Fox, Rosenberg, and Light. Eric Greenspan, when physical intimidation isn't enough. Call Eric Greenspan, 310-820-7717. And keep calling. Mention Kenny for mayor and get 10% discount. This advertisement has been approved. <laughs> All right, here's a quick and incomplete list of thank yous from uh, shit we got from people at 212 Van Dyke Street, Bisbee, Arizona, 85603. That's where you send shit that uh, we get. Non-narcotic. Uh, this guy sent this. This is when I uh, quit drinking for five days. Quit drinking and smoking. Did I bring that up already? Yeah. 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 And this sounded so good, and I've been drinking them every day since I started drinking again. Uh, at Negroni Joe seventy nine sent me a bottle of Jameson and a bottle of butterscotch de Kuiper, saying this is the best Irish coffee ever. And you're right, I do still add a little uh, uh, Carolyn's fake Bailey's cheap Bailey's into it. Uh, thank you, uh, Negroni Joe 79 on Twitter at Negroni Joe 79. Chad Shank couldn't be here tonight because he's a big fat pussy. <laughs> Wah, I have a mental illness and I'm going to kill everyone if I come over. Wah. So, but he'll be in Florida. He's got a great fucking story from his last, uh, mental checkup. He'll be telling that in Florida. Uh, 
Uh, someone sent them like 50 bucks and said, hey, Chad, thank you for filling in for Doug. I enjoy your readings of the police beat included as a small gift in appreciation. I know you're not comfortable with accolades, so I will leave this short. Thank you again. John Wesley, Toledo, Ohio. Toledo. Uh, wow. Yeah. So and he sent a envelope to uh Chaley too, which I assume has fifty bucks in it. Maybe we should steal that. Should I should I should I get my first mayoral uh campaign donation? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need donations. You you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to limit uh, the budget. Yep. Someone uh, uh oh, here's where's that goddamn letter? Uh Chad. Here, here. Chad Clo? I think it's Clough. Am I Clough. C L O U G H. Doug, thanks again for all the laughs. You're true number one fan. I guess at some point we're going to have to have uh, some playoffs for the actual it, number it, one fan. It used fan. to be so easy when you just solved it by money. Well, we could do that again. <laughs> no, we if did that once. We got a psycho. No, no we're, no. we're going to have to do it like those old, uh, the, the old one. They had the NFL Pro Bowl. They do all those side games, throwing a football through a tire. Yeah. Uh, Skills you challenge. You want to be the yeah number one fan. Maybe we do that kind of like human chicken drop. Ooh. We do some kind of, all right. <laughs> yeah. You want to be in Fight Club, you have to stand on the porch for three days just to be invited. Yeah. We're going to have to do some tryouts. to like get Star the- Wars fans and things. Yeah. Chad Kloof. Clue. Clough. I think it's Clough. He sent a, that, that uh, framed picture. It's a Instagram picture. But it's uh, blown up huge, like uh, two feet by a foot and a half of me and Bingo in Vegas last year or two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Jesus. Time flies. And it's uh, with a couple comments underneath. It's very nice. Mm. And uh, one more. No, that's it. All right. (laughs) All right. That's, uh, That's the thank yous that I have in front of me this week. Oh, someone said this. What's that? It's uh, the skeptics. Read that big word. Skeptics annotated Bible. Annotated Bible. Annotated. It's huh? still in the plastic wrapper. So I guess hmm. it. I guess it has footnotes of. It basically, the I bullshit. assume it goes through the Bible and says this didn't happen. Or, yeah. It, is, is it this like is when dinosaurs were around? Or is it like a rap verse? And they got it slashed every time you need to is take. Is there a, a reason break? we can't open it? Or are you? Looking no, at- you can open it. Oh, I just. Right. I was just. I. I keep that shit out here so I try to remember to say thank you to everyone who sends shit. And I. I, I know I miss a lot of you, but. I- uh, that's the thank yous uh, for this week. Wait, I got to go to wait, Florida. I got I got to thank uh, Doug's uh, publisher for sending me a couple of books. Decapo well. Press. The- oh shit! I didn't plug my own goddamn book. Please pre-order the book. I don't care where you get it from. Barnes and Noble, Amazon. It's called Digging Up Mother. It's important that you pre-order it for whatever reasons that they you know, yeah. to make bestseller list shit. Yeah. So do that. It's a fucking scam, but it's not scamming you. No. So just, do that. Please do that. They're scamming you. But Google it. Doug Stanhope, Digging Up Mother, and DeCapo Press, the fine people that put my book out, actually heard the podcast where Kenny's running for mayor and sent you a revised edition of running a meeting. Um, I don't actually remember the exact title. I knew you weren't going to. And I, that's why I was trying to hedge on you (laughs) trying to plug the book that they sent you. It's something about it. it. Thanks, Chaley. (laughs) No, don't edit that Chaley. That's our mayor. He's not Um, supposed to be grew at the very least when you're a stooge you're meant to be able to read the lines they give you <laughs> you can uh, memorize them over a course of yeah. time yes of course of time the rapping mayor kenny yeah do you want to get us back into the podcast with a little rhyme a little freestyle about what's going on about what it is where it's at well it's a, it's it's in the bisbee az area code 520 i don't know but i'm about to be a mayor candidate 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 i don't know what to say but that's okay run for mayor kenny today <laughs> that that'll, that'll work and now back to the podcast already failing yes <laughs> all right well, now, I, thought that, I thought that was all I, th- I thought you had something that was segue from no well, I, well I mean, we've never talked about Eric Greenspan, really, but he's our lawyer. He's our real lawyer. Like, a, our the shit is going to hit the fan lawyer. I believe that uh, on the, the the last special, I said we have a, a, a we're 
big Jude up in LA. And then we have our regular local attorney, you know, mm. uh, the DUIE kind of guy. And then we have our better call Saul guy. Mm. So yeah, Eric Greenspan is our, uh, yeah. When if- we, when we got him, I wanted to have a lawyer we'd never have to use because you just tell people who your lawyer is and they go, oh. <laughs> and that's, that is actually what happened when we signed that deal. We, Good. Yeah. They, just went, I said, they said, okay, well, who's your attorney? And I went, Eric Greenspan. And they went, oh. <laughs> All right. Now, we, now we're, we're going to have to start working uh, fake commercials for doctors. Because oh, yeah. uh, th- this is what I didn't know. I don't know how the health care shit works. Last time I had a hernia, I threw it out there on my website. I go, hey, I have an umbilical hernia. That's your belly button blown out like a cocktail weenie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nurse Betty said, oh, that can get uh, strangulated and necrotized and you could die. You just my- hear those words. Yeah. Yeah. So I put up on my website, hey, if you're a doctor, I'll trade you a free T-shirt and a DVD for umbilical hernia surgery. Wow. And I got it. But I don't want to burn them again. Like, But now the, the inguinal hernia has got to a point where I think I can't go on the road. Because that's where it's... It, it, I'm sure it started from coughing, from smoking cigarettes. I assume. So I cough hard mm-hmm. at night. Yeah. Bingo tells me. And uh, But... I would notice it on stage because I yell. And when you yell, you're putting pressure on your intestine and then your mm-hmm. intestine starts to, to spill out of your ligaments. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, ow, oh, ow. So now I'm afraid to go on the road. If I had a joke, I know I'm going to yell it. <laughs> so so uh, evidently with Obamacare, you just... You can't just buy insurance anymore. No. Because fucking fuck you at health net, health net at health net, you cocksuckers. They fucking, not only did they shut me off, Kenny, you're a fucking, you're a ditch pig, fuck broke cunt. Yes. Yes, I am. If, if, if you're late on an insurance payment for your car, well, then you don't have insurance anymore, right? Well, at least two weeks after you get that last bill, then you don't have insurance. Once you don't pay it, you don't have insurance. Well, probably. Well, they canceled my insurance, so I canceled paying them. Well, mm-hmm. that's what they go you the do. first of the year. So I just I wrote they go your your insurance is canceled for no reason. They're just no, nope, just canceling it. Why? Eh, Cause. <laughs> so I stopped paying them. They keep sending me bills. They go well that last month you were insured. What? But you yeah, gotta- December I. I'm, uh, I'm not paying you for fucking December. Like, once you told me it was canceled, I thought our agreement was over. Well, you had to send it in writing. Oh. Well, you know what? You have to send me in writing that I have to send that in writing. Didn't they call you? How about you? that? I have rules too, yeah. you fucking cocksuckers. Shove your fucking $372 up your ass. It's funny how those rules only go one way. Is that right. a month? No, they don't. They go both ways. I know. Yes. Is that a month? I guess so. God damn. That's why I don't have insurance. But it's like when, you know, you call up some place and it says, this call may be recorded. If you say that to them, they don't like it. <laughs> just always start every phone call with, this This call may be recorded. so that For quality yeah. Yeah. Just, just do the same purposes, thing. yes. And then you can do prank calls. You can do jerky boys yeah. all day. This call might be monitored and recorded for quality insurance purpose. <laughs> anyway, the point is you don't have insurance. The point is, so... Yeah, so over the last couple of months, I just it just gurgled, mm-hmm. but it, it it gurgles like a coffee maker. I can squeeze it. I know when I'm about to fart. It's bad. It's getting ready to burst. So uh, so I call up uh, my insurance lady who said, "Hey, they're canceling your policy. We should do something before the first of the year." Well, the first of the year for me is Super Bowl. That's I have a different Chinese New Year's yeah. asshole. Yeah, not a good time. So uh, they go, she goes, yeah, you, you can't buy any insurance now. Like, for the no, re- no, I'm going to pay you money. No, for the rest of the year. You, yeah. 
Yeah, you're fucked. Once the deadline ends, you're screwed for the whole year. I cannot buy insurance. Me neither. That doesn't make any sense. I've had insurance. I've had SAG after insurance back when I had a TV show. I never used it because it means paperwork. I don't like paperwork. I'll just ignore the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, this is getting to a point where I should really address this when it's making audible sounds uh -huh. that wake me up. Yeah, okay, I understand. But you do see a certain moral in this tale. <laughs> Yeah, uh, don't like, be like Kenny and not pay your bills. Yeah. This, uh, the fucking moral in this tale is the same as Subway breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. We don't sell it after fucking 10 o'clock. No, I have money. That's but, what you do. You sell insurance. I buy it. Well, now you can't do that. You can't buy. I can't take your money. Your money's no good here, sir. Apparently, they don't get paid commission <clears throat> anymore. So I'm throwing it out there. I've, I, 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 I tweeted. We talked to, sorry. Well, uh, uh, health tourism. Health tourism, where you, there's, you can go to foreign countries and get different, different countries specialize. There's no hernia country, I found out. <laughs> Not yet. But there are countries for yeah. transplants yeah. and heart things. And so, yeah, I, I can pay cash. Why not? I just thought if I if I went to a weird foreign country, it's a funny story. Yes, it is. It might end up in somebody's basement. When though. I'm drinking. Yeah. My, my, it's a funny story when you're drinking, but you can't be drinking. My question will always be, okay, this goes wrong. Who do I sue and That's, how? Uh, I talked to Dr. Steve. A big plug for Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve is the Opie uh, and Jim uh, resident doctor. He's their go-to guy and... He tweeted me back going, don't do health tourism because, you know, inguinal hernias, that's your regular groin hernia, have a tendency to go bad after surgery. And if if you're not from Estonia, <laughs> it's hard to go. There's no recourse. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think maybe I just called uh, Katie Arts that did my umbilical and go, hey. But why uh, isn't it like an open market? Why can't you just say, hey. Send me your bids for fixing this. <laughs> I you just did well because I think we only have two doctors that listen to us, and one of them is the fucking Opie and Jim show doctor. I don't think I don't he he knows medicine, but I don't know he doesn't do surgeries. He watched a lot of House. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, help me out, killer termites. Yeah. Fix my hernia. Or I'll, I'll health, never go on the road sure, again. Sure, but health tourism would be good for things like I was moaning to you the other day that I just spent two and a half thousand dollars <laughs> getting spectacles and contact lenses because my eyesight is so bad I have to get them all custom made in fucking Germany. At <laughs> Mr. Hennigan yeah. has eyesight that is so bad. He has Coke bottle contact lenses. Yeah, I, have <laughs> the, I have the full Woody Allen. What is it? Minus 2,500? I, I, I can't, yeah. It's, Mr. It's Magoo very bad. glasses? It's very bad. Uh, so, and that's not covered by Obamacare, which is not, I mean, it's not my fault I have terrible eyesight. That's part but, of your body, uh, isn't it? And just getting regular spectacles and contact lenses was over two and a half thousand. It's your mother's fault. She's still alive. No, no. But she's in a loony bin too, right? No, she's in, well, yeah, kind of. Oh, um, by the way, Chaley's mother died uh, and uh, he, she was in hospice care quickly. And uh, here's to Chaley's mother. Yes. Chaley texted me early in the morning yesterday saying, hey, uh, by the way, mother's dead. And uh, all I could think to say was, hey, now we can both eat Pez for breakfast without <laughs> getting yelled at. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it seems like only yesterday I was talking to him in a car ride about his mother getting a reverse mortgage for a house. And that was like 10 years ago. Jesus. Now he's got a reverse mortgage for a house. <laughs> him, and his, him and his twin. Yes. Him, and his, him and his evil twin. Uh, so, hey, here, here's uh before I forget. Bingo. Oh, yeah. We don't know when she's getting out. No one knows when she's getting out. So please continue. Even if she is out, if you hear this podcast three years from now, still fill out a postcard. And send it to Amy Bingaman, B I N G A M A N, Bingaman, patient number 30019, K 
care of Valley Hospital, 3550 East Pinchot Avenue. Pinchot, that's P-I-N-C-H-O-T. Like Rachel Pinchot is a girl I fucked in 1993 in San Angelo, Texas, and I fucked her three times in one night. It was the only time I've ever done that kind of numbers. The trifecta? 3550 East Pinchot. Pinchot, P-I-N-C-H-O-T Avenue, Phoenix, Arizona, 85018. And just send a postcard saying, I'm a huge fan, heard that you're uh, locked up. And just, even if she's not there, it's funny to make the legend of bingo that's already in the making with all the postcards and letters and mail and cigarettes she's received in five days. You guys are fucking beautiful Bingo is dumbstruck by your outpouring of support and the goof is funny and these cocksuckers need to know that they're being watched. And you know what? Not everyone that shuffles into that place is indigent with no recourse. We are recourse. So, yes, keep up with that customer service, Valley Hospital, and and, and, and killer termites. And that's cocksuckers in a good way, we might we say. At the very least, it would be great if we got them to retire the number. <laughs> three, I, I three actually, zero zero one zero zero one nine a, a I, banner. I want a <laughs> banner in Valley Hospital of a retired patient number. <laughs> I actually sent a postcard to the wrong patient number because I thought it was three zero zero five seven, and for some reason I didn't want to look again, and I sent it but, to that. But that's why you're going to be such a refreshing change in the mayor's office, Kenny, because you own up to your mistakes. Yes. Well, pa- patient number he doesn't three pass zero zero no. five seven. No. Do you have a postcard? Yeah. You you admitted you took a really simple piece of basic admin and fucked it up entirely. And that means that's why you're qualified. Hey, I forgot the line you gave me 30 seconds after you gave it to me. Remember it. So mm-hmm. the, okay. the the problem with the we you can't bring anything into the visiting room and to see bingo in these blue prison scrubs <laughs> they look they they they're the same texture as a a Walmart reusable bag, the, those blue mm-hmm. bags you get at Walmart, oh, but they're one tenth of the the the, the quality. The, yeah, the 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 heft. All oh, right, the weight. She was actually like peeling. The, yeah. No, the, the, I can peel these off, and she's peeling parts of her outfit off. I've been to both jail and the mental house, and I know what that fabric is like. It sucks. You can't hang yourself with it, I well, guess. Yeah, well, you could. If you really tried, you can use the pants. <laughs> I'm assuming it must I I threatened it. Trust me. I said, you give me pants, I'm, you will find me dangling off something in this jail cell. But I imagine that's why they do it, because they don't want it to have the, the strength to be a noose. I have no idea. That's it's, how they find them hanging in their cells all the time. litigation reasons. It's yeah. all fucking... It's, it's all like people liability. making sure That's what they can't for. be sued. Their yeah. blankets or their sh- their pants. But they, they, they should find a way to like, just kind of qualify the buyer. Yeah. Like, talk to Bingo for five minutes. If you're a, a, a credible human being, mm-hmm. the people that work there, a lot of them in the industry are you know just shit bags they, they you wouldn't know wait are you a fryer person at wendy's yeah it's you like should a- not be in charge of health care especially when someone's at their most vulnerable and you're just like well yeah oh you should have been able to use the phone 20 hours ago to tell your loved ones where they are while they're panicking at home going well I, I can't call her they took away her phone they took away her shoes they took oh i'm sorry i forgot to tell her she can use the phone so, so that's a big problem it's the healthcare equivalent of the tsa it's people in uniforms with badges who are empowered in a ways they shouldn't be right who got their degrees on the internet most likely oh, no, no, these are like front desk people, staff. Oh. Just staff. Oh. The most uncordial. 
Sorry, I just have to take back. I said they don't have degrees in a really condescending way. And I hate people with degrees. Okay. <laughs> and I just, I just realized I just, the way I said that was really just We're all cunts. I know, but don't that was, worry. that was, like, they don't We're have all degrees, Kenny. <laughs> no, that was grotesque. Um, but I, uh, I get a notepad taking names every time I call, who answers the phone, mm-hmm. their demeanor, the, the ramifications of the demeanor on the mental health state of the patient. Yep. But what if, I'm, what if it's just There's the case? There's going to be a Yelp review from God coming down on you. But Better if, be on the right side of the Lord on this one. <laughs> Amen. But what if it's just the case that almost everyone is a shitbag? And all that happens is they cycle through different jobs all over the place. Like the people that would get fired from Health Valley Insurance or hospital, they just turn up at your fucking, you know, Barnes and Noble and not offering to put your books in a bag. You know, that type of thing. It's just, they, they're, they're just on this endless treadmill. Spitting the point on your is, cheeseburger. If, if, if you don't get your books put in a bag at Barnes and Noble, it doesn't destroy your entire fucking family for a day yeah, or life. But, or life. The, there's a limit of the number of people who care in the world. I know. That's why That's why we don't have children. Mm. I have a child. Her name is Bingo. Yeah. It's interesting. That I remember there's an interesting survey about, you're talking about if an ordinary, like if she'd been diagnosed correctly. There are some interesting statistics about your chances of being m- diagnosed as mentally unstable. They vary depending what country you're in. Well, that makes no sense because that would, in, that would indicate that a geographic boundary would have an impact on you know, global health care. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, if, if there was any sense to the idea of mental diagnosis, it would be the same rate at every single country. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all bullshit. Thank you, mentally ill people, for chiming in and people who've gone through this and all the people on mm. Twitter uh, for, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing our best. Yeah. Nothing's bad. Bingo's happy to be seeing a doctor. The saga goes on. The soap opera doesn't end. Yeah. Is she with me or a fucking <laughs> boxcar? <laughs> boxcar. He's the, guy that used, he's the guy that used to pee his pants in Seattle. One way or another, you got a new set of uh, yard furniture. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 patio furniture that Bingo was looking up on the internet that I evidently gave her a rash and a shit about that sent her to New Orleans to begin with is sitting in a on a a, a what a pallet? Yeah, a pallet higher than the roof of the patio right now, and there's no bus anymore. I, I walked in and I said, that's why I said, what's that? And I said, went, oh, that's the patio furniture. I think the patio furniture is leaning against the the roof of that almost. It's, I do. It's, it is leaning against it and higher than it. Oh. And uh, yeah, and I just, everyone locally, I'm, I just tell them, listen to the podcast because people come over. Hey, what's going on with bingo? One at a time, and I'm so tired of fucking talking about it. Listen to the podcast. I'm going to say it once. You listen to the podcast or you listen to gossip. Either way, I'm tired of talking about it. I don't know what happens from here. Hopefully, I know we're going to goddamn Daytona Beach to see Junior Stopka, Andy Andrist, and Sean Rouse all on one bill. The funniest and most, uh, what would, would you, what would you call it? It's walking, it'll be like watching a drunk man cross a minefield on stage. The funniest people, but it could go sideways so fast. And that's March 25, 26 in Daytona Beach. Google it. I don't know where it is. It's like the something playa something uh, bar. It's, it's been a change. Of I don't know. Yeah, they, they changed the venue. We'll be there. Check on Twitter. It's my goddamn birthday. I'm 49 finally, and I've been saying I'm 50 since I was 47, because it's a round number. I'm basic. I'm like 50 years old. You're gonna give me shit like that? You're gonna. Never mind. By the time I'm 50, people are gonna think I'm lying about my age because I've been saying I'm 50 since I'm 47. I lied the wrong way. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go there. Bingo. We'll find out. We'll find out what happens next. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Greg Chaley, for uh, 
editing this and getting it out promptly. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Kenny for mayor. Kenny for mayor. Kenny for mayor. And play a song. Behind him, spin dog the chat.